All right, folks. Um, so it is now after midnight here in California, and um, now it is my mother's birthday. Uh, so happy birthday to Janet Mathis. Um, I'm going to be tying this bug today. I haven't been on in a little while. Um, COVID has been a little bit crazy. Um, so I'm going to call this bug the... I'm going to call this Muzzy's Camp House Cricket. I guess. Uh, so this is um, based on a couple of different flies that I've tied before. Um, but I've kind of thrown it together with some colors of the way they, uh, the crickets are at, or the grasshoppers or whatever you call them, the hoppers at our cabin. So uh, it'll be brown foam, some tan foam, some kind of reddish brown and speckled legs. I'll have a little piece of orange foam for an eye, and I'll be using a marker to make the dot. Um, it's got a mix of hare's ear and some uh, ice dub olive brown flash for dubbing and then a little bit of deer hair for the wing. So this is one I tied before and I'll take this down and we'll start tying. So I'm using today, um, so I always, a lot of, most of my videos, I use eagle claw hooks. Uh, just because they're inexpensive and you can still tie flies on them. And I've got several different versions of Eagle Claw. Um, you got these guys here with um, their bait holders, but they have a turned down eye. I'm not going to use that. And I've got these ones that I tied most of my original flies with on here. Um, it is They are still bait holders, but they have a flat eye. And they're kind of a short, um, short and deep hook. But I'll, I think I'm going to use this one today. Um, these are also from Eagle Claw. I don't know what these are all called. I didn't really pay attention when I bought them. I just looked at the hook that I was wanting. But these are kind of a long shank hook. Let's see if I can get one out of here. They kind of just ball up in the container. Here we go. Make sure they don't fall out and end up in my carpet. So this is a long, kind of a long shank hook. It's got a flat eye, which is fine for this fly. So I generally start by pressing the barb. I'll put it in. Haha, <laughs> Kalia, I saw you today, and you talked about fly tying, and I was intending to tie a fly, and then I saw you ask about it, heard you ask about it, and thought I would go ahead and tie it. So thank you for the inspiration. Um, so I, I depress the barb so that whenever I catch a, a fish, if I'm deciding to throw it back, it doesn't tear up the fish trying to get the hook out. And if it swallows it, it makes it a little bit easier to get out so it doesn't hurt the fish in that way. So the barb is depressed, so it's just a smooth point. And I like these hooks. Um, they they make a good hook for a, like a dry fly. Um, also for a hopper, because uh, it puts the the hook way back behind the fly and then it doesn't have the rough um, barbs of a bait holder so and also this hook is um, it's flat the bait holders are have a twist in them that you have to straighten out and I don't care much for that so here we go so I'll go ahead and get this in my vise and I can tell it's good because it vibrates and kind of sings to you when it's right <clears throat> so again, my um, the parts that I'm using, uh, I'm starting off with some unithread, um, dark brown, it's a 8 aught weight. Um, a lot of people when they tie with foam, they don't like to use a thinner thread like this because they're afraid it cuts it. I've not had that trouble. Um, maybe that's just me. Maybe they tie their stuff too tight. I don't know, but I've also not had much trouble with my um, my flies coming apart. Uh, so I have the the dark brown and light brown foam, and I've had these cut specifically so that the thin 
um, the light brown or tan is slightly narrower than the dark brown. So we'll get into that in a moment. And then I have uh, part of a hair's mask. And I'll be pulling the hair from for that. And then again, like I showed you earlier, the uh, ice brown olive dub. Um, ice dub olive brown. Wow, I'm tired. Uh, and then I have a piece of deer hair, um, of deer hide that I'll be using the hair from. So, all right. So let me get started by dressing my hook. Um, and just hold the tag in. I, I always like to describe to people who maybe have never tied a fly what we're doing here. So I'm just holding on to the tag end and I'll just wrap on top of the tag until I cover the hook up enough. What this does is it makes the hook rough so that you have something to tie on to and it also gives it a good base for the thread not to come loose and slip out. And just go back and forth a couple of times and just give it a good kind of coating. Okay. I'll snip this a little bit off. And then I'm just going to bring this back one more time. Actually, I need to go down just a touch further over into the bend of the hook a little bit. There. And then I'll come back towards the front. All right, and so um, I watched a video, uh, I believe it was the Nordic Angler, I think his name is. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, he does his fly tying. He has he owns a shop in Iceland or somewhere, uh, but he does his fly tying both in uh, Dutch, I guess it would be, and in English. I've only seen the English ones, but he does do it in both. But he um, noted that you know to be careful when you're tying these in to make sure the correct one is on the outside by tying it in first instead of tying them in the wrong um, order so be careful to do that so all i'm doing here is just i'm going to start near the head and i'm just going to work the foam um, i'm going to cover the foam with thread but work it down so that it's um, compressed so that I can tie over it with the uh, dubbing to make the body and so I'm just wrapping and I'm also going to take a few turns sometimes I'll lift the foam up and tie under there and then come around a couple of times keeping making sure it stays on top of the hook and then I'll go under the foam and what this is going to do is help me keep it from help the foam keep from turning over on the hook when it's uh, being used so just a couple of turns uh, on top of the foam and then a couple of turns or a turn under the foam. You just kind of alternate it here and there. Okay, so I've gone all the way down, tying down the foam on the hook, and then I'm going to go back up and just make sure that these bigger places are tied down also. But I'm also preparing for the second layer of foam and so this is the wider lighter colored foam and I'm um, again making sure that the lighter color is underneath and the darker color is on top so I tie them in the lighter color second and I think I need to trim this down a little bit I've basically I've cut this piece as wide as the gap of the hook just to give it an idea and just to keep it um, consistent whenever I tie them. And I just need to trim out just a little bit of this just so I don't have way too much bulk. It's kind of difficult to tie in and it's also uh, just kind of um, overkill for bulk for material. So you can see I just took a little bit off and the shape, it doesn't matter how clean it is because I'm just going to tie it off like I did here and it's just going to disappear under the thread. So I'll go again, same thing, just going over the top of the foam. So, like I said before, this is um, 
I'm tying this kind of with a color pattern of similar to the grasshoppers that are at our cabin. Um, I think, uh, Meredith, I think it's good to see you on here. I think that you've been to my cabin. I don't remember, though. I know that there was a group of Teague people that went with Jim and Trudy one time, and I can't remember if you were one of them or not. But um, I'd be interested to know. Um, so anyway, uh, we catch these grasshoppers all over the place, and they're two-tone brown like this. Um, and uh, perch like them. So I figured might as well tie a fly that's that color. And I did, a couple of years ago, tie a fly for my mother. I don't remember if I did it on her birthday or not, but I copied a fly that she had used at the cabin before and um, just re remade it, and it turned out pretty well. All right, so now I've tied in both of my pieces of foam, but now I need to fill in the body with dubbing. And the way that I do that, I'm going to take my hair's ear, the hair's mask, um, and I'm, I'm pulling it from the mask part, not the ear part. Uh, these are, this hair is a little bit shorter, but I need the longer, fluffier, light brown stuff. This was a full mask, and one, either one of our dogs or a dog that we were dog sitting got it, got a hold of it, and it became a chew toy. And now it's in two pieces, and there's some of it missing. So <laughs> before it was the full face of the mask of the hair. Uh, the rabbit. So uh, I'm just going to pluck some of this out and all you do is just pinch it and pull and just keep doing it until you get a little clump, a usable clump that you can use. <laughs> a usable clump that you can use. That was real good. All right. So there's a little bit of fuzziness and then I'm going to take a little bit of the dubbing and just pull out some sparkle. And I'm just going to lay it on top of each other. Like that. And just kind of mix it together. Probably should get a little more hair. And just keep mixing it. And then what I'm going to do. I've got some. That's a good mix. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take my bowstring wax. There's other fly tying wax, but this is what I have, and I've always used it, and it worked fine. I'm going to take my thread, and I'm just going to rub the wax on there. This will help hold the dubbing. This is not incredibly sticky wax. Fly tying wax, I'm sure, is much stickier. So then all you do is take... I'm going to back this out just a touch it'll back out. Yeah. Well, operating a camera with one hand is not really doing well. Hi, I just turned that around. I didn't know it. <laughs> All right, ah, it backed out. Zoom back in a little bit, maybe. There we go, right there. All right, so I'm gonna hold it on the string here and I'm going to just twist onto the thread and it'll move up the thread and kind of coat it like yarn and then I'll pull this bottom part off so I don't have too much that I'm working with and you always want to as you're working with this and as you're adding it I always want to turn it the same direction because if you start going the other direction go back and forth or something uh, it'll just have trouble all right, so and I'm just going to wrap this around, touching turns, and all I'm doing is giving a base to cover up that foam and to kind of build up a little bit of the body. Okay, so I've used up what I've put on, got a little bit of extra wax in there. I'm just going to do this same thing again, roll this on, oh, I need to add some more wax. Wax. And we'll roll it on. Yeah. And be careful of your hook point because it gets your finger. I'll wake 
wake you up in the morning. All right, just keep rolling it on. Work your way forward. And we're gonna come back and brush this out to make it more fluffy on the bottom. Uh, as you can see from this one, making it hang down some more. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit loose on the string, but I do need to prepare just a little bit more. So just to pull some more off of the hair's mask. And then a little bit more dubbing. And then mix it. And this is kind of the way you do any kind of dubbing. Um, I mean, you can find any kind of material that you can kind of shred like this and then web it out, what they call webbing it out. You make it a big flat piece and then you just wax your thread or use waxed thread. There is thread that's already waxed. And you just lay it under and roll it on. That's all you do. And when in doubt, you can, before you do this, you can tie in a piece of wire, like copper or something, tie it in here, and then after you do this, you can cover it with wire, help hold it together. And this will be my last round of dubbing here. Just work my way forward. Sometimes you gotta stop and tighten your dubbing up on the th thread again. Just work that forward, I think that's probably good. I'll take the rest of that off, save it for later because I will be needing some more after I tie off the foam. Okay. So, now I'm going to take my first piece of foam, pull it down, and kind of pinch it over the top here, and then underneath back to the top and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off what I'm gonna do is pull it kind of tight cut it close there's a little bit extra sticking off and just kind of trim the really big parts and then just tie it off with string other piece so you see how the skinnier piece allows the lighter color to stick out I could have made it slightly thinner but it's probably fine I could also pull it a little bit tighter so that it draws up a little more and then I'll come in here tie that one off now this part I'm gonna leave because this is gonna roll back over and create my head um, Okay, I'll get a couple of turns underneath. All right, now. I'm going to take my deer hair. I'm just going to get a section here. I want the deer hair to be, well, it's going to be long enough, but it's going to be sticking up. Easier place to cut from. So I'm just going to get a kind of like a pencil sized clump. A lot of this is going to come out after you stack it using a hair stacker. So I'm just going to go in and cut this off here. A little coronavirus haircut. I'm going to take it by the butts. Where I just cut it off. And this is a hair stacker. It's a little device. You just put the hair down in there, you tap it, and it makes all the points come together. I'm sorry for the shaking, but that's all you gotta do. And then when you open it up, the hairs 
are stacked. Oh, there's a piece of foam. Yay. I don't know where that came from. You just take out the shorter, ugly pieces. And I'm going to take this, trim off the uneven ends. Mm, that's so satisfying. Okay, now, I just want to make sure this is about as long as the body, which it is. Still have some ugly pieces hanging out in there. Some blunt pieces and some pieces that are a little bit longer sticking out. Anyway, so I'm going to make it about the same length as the body. I'm going to cut off a little bit more so I don't have as much to tie off. I'm going to just lay it on top. Over the top a couple of times. Like that. Sticks up pretty well. Now I'm gonna go. I might have to do this a couple of times, and I don't have to have the sparkle dubbing. Although I do have some left over from earlier. Unless I sneezed and blew it away or something. I don't remember sneezing. Oh, I don't know where it went. Oh well. I'll just use... You see, it doesn't take much. I just have a little tuft. But I'm just going to roll it on. Hold this down. Right around. It just kind of helps it cover up that the black thread, the brown thread, whatever it is. All right, now I'm going to take. Uh, I do have this little piece of orange, orange foam, and I've got hair everywhere. I'm going to lay this down here. I'm just going to fold this over tight around that. Some tweezers to pull it through a little bit better. Because my big fat fingers can't grab that little stuff. And I'm just going to pull this tight. I'll be cutting this off, but I'm going to leave it there for now because um, I want it to hold that hair out of the way for some other stuff that I need to do. All right, so that orange is in there, and I'm going to snip that off, and it's going to expose the edge of it. Um, next, the legs. So these legs come in packs, and they're in chunks like this. And what I'm going to do is just split off two pieces. Cut this, these two strands that are stuck together. I'm going to cut them in half. And then I'll have my legs for my two sides. So one of the tricks to this, to help you tie it in to start with, is if you take it from two sides and go under the thread here, see the thread will hold it down, but you just come over the top. And then it 
just tied in. That's all you have to do. And I'll just go one more time around there. And now, with my second pair, the other half of my pair, right there. I couldn't find them on my messy desk. I'll do the same thing. But this time I'll just pull it up to the side on the other side. like that. And I can take the length off there. Separate those legs. Take them off here. About even. And come back about just a little bit past the tail. And the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with just a little bit more dubbing. I'll cover up that bit of thread there. Really doesn't take much on this part because it's just one wrap, basically. Go here. Make kind of a neck around the thing. And then I'm about to finish it, so all I need to do take a little bit of clear nail polish. This is my glue for the thread. I'm gonna put some on the thread here. And close it well so it doesn't dry out like it the last bottle did. So I've got now, nail polish on the thread. I'm just going to go like one more time through there. That'll glue it in. Two times, sorry. And I'm going to do a whip finish. Finishing touches. I'll snip this. I'll be careful not to cut my legs off here. Snip that. So you have that white dot, basically. Or orange dot, I mean. Do the same thing on the other side. And then come in here and give just a little bit. on the top and this one I can either I can round this which I'll do just taking those little corners off so it's not so abrupt and then last touch take my sharpie put a little dot for the eyeball sure that's not going to make the fish bite, but it looks pretty cool. So, and then finally, I have my mustache brush with uh, Velcro, the rough side. I'm going to use that to fluff out. The dubbing. A little bit much, so I'm going to take it and flatten it out on the bottom. And there we go. So that fur underneath there, when you throw it, it's going to hold the bubbles, which a lot of insects 
will carry the bubbles with them to give something to breathe and help them float. And it'll help this float. It'll stay on top. This white wing, which we know that grasshoppers don't have, uh, when this is floating down the creek or down the river, it'll help you just be able to see the fly a little easier and be able to locate it when you cast. So you can watch it, watch for it to disappear. Also, if you use this as a... You can use this kind of a bobber for a dropping fly where you would tie the, the line, the other line. So you tie this to your, your line coming in from the fly rod. Then you would take another line and tie it to the hook bend and then come down with a dropper and have a second hook down there. That would be something that would imitate a bug that was under the water, whereas this would be a terrestrial or something that lives on the land and jumps in the water. So, this is Muzzy's Camp House Hopper. Happy birthday, Mom. Hope you enjoyed it. And to those watching, people I haven't seen in a little while, Michael McCauley, Kalia Cash, Meredith, you guys, good to see you all. And anybody else that I missed that popped on. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, check out my other videos. Go to YouTube and um, search Quiet Man 28, and you'll see other flies like this tied and explained. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good night. Happy COVID.